to our final quick fire round called Scenes We'd Like to See. This is for everyone, so if you can all make your way over to the performance area, please. I caught ideas for scenarios we'd love to see, and the performers come in with their suggestions. <coughs> right, here we go. The first subject is things you wouldn't hear from a weather forecaster. The Met Office have issued a weather warning. They've told the weather not to do that again, or there'll be trouble. <laughs> Temperatures could rise to 31 degrees. Shut! I've left my baby in the car! <laughs> a hurricane tonight will be caused by low pressure and God's hatred of homosexuality. A huge depression over Scotland and now the weather. <laughs> and finally, a warning to hay fever sufferers. Don't come sneezing near me or I'll rip your face off. <laughs> so, here's the summary. Monday shite, Tuesday shite, Wednesday shite, Thursday bollocks. The humidity's rising. The barometer's going low. Tonight, for the first time, just about half past ten, it's going to start raining men. The outlook's bright for the weekend. I've got three grams of coke in my pocket and my wife's on holiday. Well, let's go to Carol on the roof of Television Centre. She's not meant to be there. She's just a bit depressed. <laughs> this part of the country is going to stay hot and wet for quite some time because that's where my girlfriend lives. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So, it's going to be between 17 and 21, but Berlusconi won't date older than that. It was raining cats and dogs last night. I should know. I was throwing them off my roof. What are you watching me for? Look out the fucking window. It's going to be cloudier tonight. I love those German birds. <laughs> What do you care what the weather's going to be like? You look shit in all your clothes. <laughs> the next topic is... Deleted lines from Star Trek. Kirk to Enterprise. OK, how about if I stand over here? <laughs> Scotty, that's the most convincing your accent has ever been. Captain, I can see an alien ship approaching. It's not showing up on the radar. It's a circular vessel, some sort of lettering and number... Oh, no, sorry, it's my, it's my tax disc. <laughs> I have no emotion. My mother was a Vulcan. My father was Gordon Brown. <laughs> All right, which one of you ate my Scotch egg? <laughs> This is the Federation of Gay Planets. Open your docking bay and prepare to be boarded. <laughs> Tell you what, Spock, your towel is a lot softer than mine. <laughs> Captain's log, just seen some aliens. OMG, WTF, LOL, smiley face. <laughs> Who are these terrifying aliens? You can't call them that anymore, Captain. It's a Huru and Sulu. <laughs> Welcome to the SS Enterprise, Mr. Eccleston. Now, which one of you put your red top in the washing with all the yellow ones? <laughs> There's going to be some changes around here. They call me Captain Tatty Bojangles. <laughs> What's wrong, Captain Picard? What's wrong? I'm a serious Shakespearean actor, <laughs> and I'm talking to the ambassador of the fucking worm people. <laughs> Unlikely things to hear on a survival show. I was first taught to eat in the bush by a French girl I went out with at university. <laughs> to get the fish, break the ice, Jump the checkout and run! 
not only is this lake good for fish, but we can also put a body in it. <laughs> Using excrement, mud, and twigs, they've made primitive bedding here at the Premier Travel Lodge. I'm in the Congo. Let's sell this once and for all. Do you boys like Umbungo? <laughs> Here I am in the jungle. The mighty jungle. <laughs> I win my way, I win my way, I win. But who are the truly civilized? Is it the Mbupi tribe or is it us with our books, our medicine and our internet? Oh yes, it's us. <laughs> Of course, food is a scarce and valuable resource to these tribes people. So I've just bagged myself two nights with this fella's wife for a Twix. <laughs> you know, Ant and Deck think that their jungle's pretty tough. Well, they joined me today, there was no food, so I ate them. <laughs> the villagers get up early and walk five miles to fetch clean water every day. Which begs the question, why not move the village closer? <laughs> the strong, powerful sun is making me sweat. Oh shit, here comes his dad. <laughs> I've been living in these woods for three weeks now, but that's what happens if you're married to the Home Secretary and she catches you watching porn. <laughs> I'm Bear Grylls, and this is my brother, Wolf Stir Fry. Just achieved my life's ambition of climbing Everest with no food and no equipment. Now do you love me, Daddy? <laughs> okay, the next topic is unlikely things to read on a packet. Ragu sauce. If you gave this to someone who is actually from Italy, they'd punch you in the face. <laughs> To open, push down tab, break tab, swear repeatedly, STAB WITH A PAIR OF SCISSORS! <laughs> Serves four, you greedy bastard. Now put some of that back. Viagra are proud sponsors of Andy Murray, for people who can only ever achieve a semi. Bag may also be used for autoerotic asphyxiation. Fair trade coffee. If you don't like it, you're racist. Sunny Delight counts towards your five a day as minus two. To stop diarrhea, take one teaspoon and shove it up your ass. Adults and children over 12 years. Try not to get those two mixed up. <laughs> Cup of soup. Just add soup. <laughs> Best before date, Rehypnol. <laughs> Serving suggestion. On a plate, you thick moron. <laughs> we use only the very cheapest horse meat to make, fuck it, it's just a cat. <laughs> Deleted lines from a fantasy film. I am Aragorn, son of Arathorn, the heir to Isildur and part of the Fellowship of the Ring. Please leave a message after the tone. <laughs> Ron had been suffering from swine flu and people were avoiding him. Luckily he was ginger and he was used to it. <laughs> I don't know why you're so upset, Harry. The original Dumbledore died three films ago and no one gave a shit. <laughs> Did you find Narnia in the wardrobe? No, Edmund. We found your porn stash. <laughs> My friends, we will never hear the word Mordor again. Taggart has been cancelled. <laughs> no, Harry, it's not a five-headed dog. It's girls allowed. <laughs> Mick. 
I am Aslan, formed by the merger of Asda and Matalan. <laughs> We had only been there for a day, but to us it felt like 15 years. That's Birmingham! <laughs> Did you honestly think I could be defeated by someone younger? I am Arlene Phillips! <laughs> Welcome to Mordor, twinned with Swansea. <laughs> this will never work, Frodo. <laughs> In the wardrobe, we found a magical compartment that led to the Fritzel family. <laughs> he stole it from me, my precious! My... Oh, no, it's in my pocket. <laughs> you all right, John? How's it going, all right? Yeah. As kids. Right? See you later. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a dwarf, I'm a lesbian. <laughs> the next topic is things you don't want to hear from your flatmates. That's my milk in the fridge. I squeeze it out of my tits with a vice. <laughs> share the electricity bill. I've got a phone charger and a laptop, and you're on a life support machine. <laughs> My last flat was just like friends. Have you seen the one where Joey kills everybody? <laughs> I love talking to you. With you, I can be my real self. <laughs> There's just two of us. Well, three if you count God. I'd give it ten minutes in the toilet if I were you. That one could talk. Well, if you don't think I'm a nosy bastard, why did you write that in your diary? Oh, that! That's just a novelty shower gel in the shape of a webcam. Hey, you said there wasn't enough room to swing a cat. Look at this. <laughs> Loads of room. Oh, uh, a Mr. G had called. <laughs> he says it's time. I don't see why I should pay for half the loo roll when I never use any. <laughs> I tell you what, that Hoover is powerful. <laughs> There's, there's one certain way to find out who ate my <coughs> yoghurt, an AIDS test. <laughs> Unlikely things to hear on a consumer programme. I'm Adrian Childs, <laughs> and I was shocked by the new Shrek film. I've not been paid for it, <laughs> but I seem to be starring in it. <laughs> consumer scams are on the increase. If you'd like to find out how to stop them, send us your name and address, your date of birth, and your mother's maiden name. I've just found out my jumper was made by Indian slave children. Can I just say they did a wonderful job? <laughs> Next, we speak to Barbara, who was devastated when she bought Daniel Beddingfield tickets that turned out to be genuine. <laughs> At first, the company seemed willing to compromise. Then we sent them a letter from Nicky Campbell, and they told us to fuck off. <laughs> I won't be on this show next week, because I'm going off to Nigeria to pick up my lottery winnings. <laughs> Last week, we said that we were going to expose London's security scene. This week, we say, there's been a misunderstanding. Could I please have my kids back? <laughs> On closer inspection, Mrs. Wilkins, your hamster's jacuzzi would appear to be a food blender. <laughs> hey, I'm Nicky Campbell, 
and I've been ploughing through the usual five sacks of hate mail to find this letter complaining about washing powder. <laughs> Today, as I stand before you panellists in the last clothes I own, we ask, is divorce biased in favour of the greedy bitch who left me? <laughs> We got there, the weather were crap, the food were crap, the locals were racist. What a bloody brilliant holiday! <laughs> of the half dozen condoms we tested, all but two burst in my stomach. <laughs> I'm Anne Robinson, <laughs> and without plastic surgery, I'd look like E.T.'s balls. <laughs> <laughs> OK, the next topic is... Things a sports commentator would never say. I'll have called in the video referee. Which is better, alien or predator? <laughs> oh, yes, and that's a beautiful uppercut. And another one. But hey, the DJ is still not going to mm. change the track <laughs> for Stephen Gerrard. Jimmy White holding up the cue there as he collapses at the telenoid bins. <laughs> Welcome to Robot Wars. Cruncher, ready! Stephen Hawkins, ready. <laughs> and England have won the Ashes. <laughs> it's the women's 100 metres final, and from left to right, it's no, no, yes, yeah. maybe. From behind. <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> The Queen smashes Camilla in the face and Prince Philip hits her with a hammer. This is what I call a royal rumble. <laughs> Venus Williams has brought something different to the ladies' game. Male genitalia. <laughs> oh, he's great with a dead ball. When I had one, I had to sit down for a week. And I uh, think that massive widescreen close-up of the wedgie goes some way to explaining why we don't normally televise judo. <laughs> and that bloody smear is the reason you don't see a lot of streakers in Formula One. <laughs> some people on the pitch, they think it's all over. It is now. The Chinese secret police have shot them. <laughs> Well, he's finally got his head down, his hands are firmly round the shaft. Which is why I'm handing over to John Infidel. <laughs> overpaid, overpaid, knocks it on to overrated. Overrated on to possible rapist, possible rapist, knocks it forward, closet gay, goal! <laughs> Unlikely lines from a thriller. Michael, Peter, David, Vladimir, I think we may have a spy in the organisation. <laughs> Give me the pentagon, then the triangle, and then the square. Ah, <laughs> oh, pussy galore, Bond here. I've been told by my doctor that I need to contact all previous partners. <laughs> The owner of this motel dresses up as his mother and stabs people. But the guidebook says it's still better than the Ibis. <laughs> I want you to go to Warsaw, meet a man called Borislav. You'll then ask him why he didn't fix my plumbing before he left the home. <laughs> Miss Scarlet looked at him through the window. He had one massive testicle like a space hopper. That was why they called him Professor Plum. This is no ordinary pen bond. Turn it upside down, the woman's clothes drop off and you can see a tense. Red or green, red or green, which do I cut? Come on, they're only peppers. How long is this salad going to take? We need to find the third man. There's no way Amanda Holden will shag just two of us. Here's Simon. The Orient Express has been cancelled. However, there was a murder on the temporary Orient replacement bus. <laughs> I have amnesia. The tattoos on my body will tell me what happened. 
Dara was here. <laughs> I'd been a serial killer for four years, but they'd never given me a nickname. Then, you bite one guy in the ass, <laughs> suddenly you're the butt muncher. Ah, <laughs> oh, the butt muncher's got me! The butt muncher's got me! <laughs> okay, the next topic is bad things to say at a wedding. <laughs> I do. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, the vowels are simple. Just repeat after me. Eeny, meeny, macaraca, rare ride, dominaca, chicka, pocka, lolly, popper, on, pom, push. And we will now sing hymn number 225. My milkshake brings all the boys to the yard. When John went down on one knee, I wish I'd known that he was having a stroke. <laughs> I'd, uh, I'd like to thank Elsie for the flowers. It was her funeral I nicked them from. So your best man's in an absolute state. That's my mum. <laughs> now, it's my job to tell some amusing stories about Gavin. So first of all, for a kickoff, he's a hermaphrodite. <laughs> my bride always wears white. Isn't that right, Dolly? Meh! <laughs> hey, Carol's family have always had their doubts about me. So first of all, let me explain why I'm naked. <laughs> this is my first gay wedding, so you must be the pretty one. <laughs> to my new son-in-law, I would say this. You have released me this monster is yours now. I would like to apologise for the state of my clothes and the smell of sick only I spent last night in a skip. Anyway, dearly beloved, we are gathered here today. People have said to me, why have you stopped being a bachelor after so long? And I say, well, look at her. She's wealthy and she's dying. It wouldn't be a traditional Norfolk wedding without a speech from the father of the bride and groom. Bad things to hear at the psychiatrist. I don't want you to think of me as a psychiatrist. I want you to think of me as a mental patient who killed the psychiatrist before you got here. <laughs> You'll think you are a potato. On the couch, please. <laughs> Welcome to your first session of Freudian analysis. What seems to be the penis? <laughs> well, you say that you're paranoid, but I have a report here that says you looked very relaxed in the bath this morning. <laughs> oh, yes. I can see why you fancy your mother. She's something of a fox. <laughs> I see you've tried to commit suicide five times. Your dad was right. You are useless. You've been coming here for six months to talk about your trust issues. Well, we've been filming you for Britain's nuttiest bastards. Yes, I think your parents caused you problems from a very early age, Clitorina. Your thoughts that you're horrifically unattractive are all in your mind, Mr. Johnson. <laughs> okay, word association. I'm going to say a word, and I want you to say the first thing that pops into your breasts. <laughs> wow, that's, that's really interesting. Do you mind if I use some of this stuff as lyrics for my band? <laughs> <laughs> You have emotional problems and a below average IQ. I'm prescribing Hollyoaks. <laughs> oh, that's a classic dream. It means you're a paedophile. I want you to go to your happy place. Judging by the size of you, that's probably Greg's. Hypnosis could certainly help with your intimacy issues. While you were unconscious, I rested my nuts on your head. 
The next topic is on lighty things to hear on a TV talent show. 2007's winner Leon Jackson is still selling records in his Saturday job at HMV Paisley. <laughs> Of course it's not a freak show. Now get your Siamese twin asses on that stage and you nail Papa Don't Preach. <laughs> <laughs> Two crosses light up and the crowd cheers as Stavros Flatley are crucified in flames. Hello, I'm Rita, I'm 87, and I'm gonna do Keep You Up With Me Boobs. Here we go. Okay, you're right, I don't really have any talent, but I'm kind of cute. I'm Kylie Minogue's sister, for God's sake. What a hilarious singing dog Susan Boyle is. <laughs> when, you, when you said you were gonna saw a woman in half, I thought you were a magician. Oh, my family aren't gonna believe it when they see me on TV. They think I'm dead. <laughs> hello, I'm Susan Boyle, and I would like to say hello to my brother, Frankie. <laughs> Susan Boyle is not related to me. None of my relatives will ever manage to chisel their way out of that cellar. I am an escapologist. Today I have escaped from Broadmoor. <laughs> Next on ITV4, it's ITV3's coverage of ITV2's making of documentary about the coverage on ITV4. <laughs> Hello, I'm a Billy Cock. And this is my partner, Brian Balls. And together we are Billy and Brian. No, oh, my magical racist cat. They come over here, they steal our bloody jobs. I'm not having it. That was a beautiful song until you fucking sang it. Things you wouldn't want to hear at work. Oh. Oh, you've already given Michael his dosage. <laughs> it's not a photocopy, it's a shredder. And what have you done to your arse? <laughs> so, you probably want to know how I got the nickname Dog Botherer. <laughs> Imagine that! My first day at work, and I appear to have slipped on a wet floor. Hmm, I think I might be entitled to compensation. Do you mind if I leave early? I've got to pick up the kids before their parents get there. He's the CEO, he's the COO, and I'm head of the Agricultural Division, the CIEIO. Now, I want you all to put down those football bits that you've been sewing because I've heard that it's somebody's very special 11th birthday. <laughs> a photo of a cake. <laughs> Panchawaho Chongwa! Panchawaho! Don't worry, this isn't the first operation I've done. Last time I got almost the whole way round before the buzzer went off. <laughs> We've run out of semi-skim, so I've topped your coffee up with breast milk. <laughs> What do you mean it's not your turn to make the coffee? This is fucking Starbucks. <laughs> Get off your shit. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> this air traffic control thing's not as easy as it looks. <laughs> to work in a library! <laughs> if only I could read! Okay, the next topic is unlikely things to hear on a property programme. Next, Cash in the Attic. Tennis player Pat Cash has a nervous breakdown <laughs> and decides to haunt his estranged family. <laughs> 
today we help Al McGrahi swap his one-bedroom soul for a Libyan place in the sun. <laughs> The couple's grand design is to turn an abattoir into an old folks' home by changing the sign. <laughs> I'm Sarah Beanie and I'm not pregnant. <laughs> you can't decide between the two properties? Well, you're an MP. Why don't you claim for them both? <laughs> The thing is, I have actually heard that on a property programme in Scotland. <laughs> and remember, the prices of property can go down as well as plummet. You know I said those ghastly beams, what on earth are they for? It turns out they were for holding your house up. <laughs> Hello, I'm Lawrence Llewellyn Bowen and I'm so posh I've actually got a swan for a penis. <laughs> Michael has always wanted to live in the country and now he does. His business has collapsed and he's living in a caravan in a field in Herefordshire. <laughs> Even on a collapsing market, you can still make money from a flat like this. We invited three different estate agents to come and value it, then harvested their organs. <laughs> Welcome to this episode of Homes Under the Hammer, where we attack Eamon Holmes with a hammer. <laughs> Next on Location, 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 Kirsty and Phil finally go at it like dogs. <laughs> And obviously this will all be included in the day. Oh my God, he's back early. Quick, out of garden! <laughs> well, we've visited five properties so far, but they've all had alarms, so no joy there. <laughs> Very spacious and with wonderful views, but this flat is in Dundee, so it might as well be built out of shit. <laughs> Rejected questions from this year's exams. What colour does a Smurf go when we choke it? Translate the following into German. Two world wars and one world cup. Do-da, do-da. How many pepperami big boys could you feed to Victoria Beckham through a tube before she became visible to the human eye? <laughs> what is the name of the force that pulls objects towards the center of the Earth? Is it A, gravity, or B, magic? <laughs> Katie Price is supposedly worth eight and a half million pounds and has got a thriving TV career. Explain. <laughs> if George Michael leaves at eight o'clock for a five mile drive, when does he crash? <laughs> there are six lines of equal length. How long will Kerry Katona be in the bathroom? If a train is going at 70 miles per hour, how surprised would you be? <laughs> what is amnesia? Is it A, memory loss, A, memory loss, or four, the Battle of Hastings? If Sally buys three oranges and two apples, how far south of Scotland is she? <laughs> Discuss the idea that Willy Wonka was a paedophile. What is amnesia? Is it A, memory loss? Draw a diagram of the male genitalia. Please use the tracing paper provided. What are most Canadians renowned for saying? A. Yeah. <laughs> In 
English. Is standards declining? <laughs> Hitler, Pol Pot, Genghis Khan. Shag, marry or kill? <laughs> There's a wedding where Jane invites 20 guests and her partner Helen invites 40 guests. How angry is God? <laughs> <laughs> the next topic is unlikely things to hear on a TV business show. Well, the FTSE has had its best day since March. It went shopping, had lunch with friends, and took in a show before shagging a complete stranger it met in a bar. Our invention lets you know whether or not a girl fancies you. We call it beer. <laughs> OK, Dragons, I've developed a system that lets you get your own seat on the bus, and it involves talking slightly too loudly and pitting yourself! <laughs> This morning, I am asking for half a million pounds. And with that, I will buy half a million lottery tickets. <laughs> Good evening, Dragon. Oh, jeez, what the hell is that? That's Evan Davis, the host? I'm out. <laughs> OK, we may have lost some money promoting Michael Jackson 02, but let's face it, I've just signed a deal for the new Oasis tour. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Working Lunch, a show for people who are so good at business, they're sat at home watching the TV in the middle of the fucking day. Dragons, I have three words for you. Reggae, reggae condoms. <laughs> The last task was easy, and yet you cocked it up. I only asked you to blow the bloody doors up. This week, the dragons meet a retired Nigerian brigadier with an offer that sounds too good to be true. Today, there was a hard drop on the footsie, and I got a bruisey on my handy wandy. <laughs> This week, the apprentices face their toughest task ever, selling the shite Sir Alan actually makes. Bad things to hear from a tour guide. <laughs> Please don't take photos of the natives, because they believe that you're taking part of their soul. Apart from that, enjoy Norwich. <laughs> Hello, my name's Janet. I'm your holiday rep. And basically, I'll be giving out morning after pills like they were smarties. <laughs> I'm afraid this is the loudest. <laughs> Venice is the most historical city, famous for its... Oh shit, it's flooded! Everyone get back on the bus! <laughs> A lot of you will be wondering why there are so many wonderful foreign treasures <laughs> on display here at the British Museum. And the answer is quite simple, really. Unbeat spear. <laughs> Don't worry, this castle does cater for the disabled. They bring you a sandwich while the rest of us go up the steps to look at it. Let's have a little song, shall we? Da na now, 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 now. Coming up later on, we've got the topless donkey derby, and who's got the funniest Willy competition? Yes, it's going to be the best saga holiday you've ever had. I know that a lot of you can't bear to leave Thailand, which is why I've hidden drugs randomly in your luggage. <laughs> and as we enter the next room, we, I need you all to be very quiet, because we have technically broken in. <laughs> if you need anything, anything at all, <clears throat> I'll be under your bed. And if you look out the window on your left, you'll see the side of the road that we should be driving on. Of course, you have to respect local customs. On the right-hand side, you'll see a woman being bumped at the stake. And on the left, Dundee Town Hall. Well, this is the deepest, darkest bit of the caves. And unless you give me 20 pounds each, it's where you're staying. 
And uh, according to Wikipedia, uh, the East Wing was built in the year Dougie is a homo. <laughs> We're now leaving the green zone. Pop on your flat jackets. This is the real Baghdad. <laughs> An adult and two children is ten pounds. But enough about my trip to Cambodia. <laughs> Our next topic is unlikely things to hear on a breakfast show. If the woman I picked up last night is watching, help yourself to seal, but get out of the flat by the time I get home. <laughs> And now it's time for Thought for the Day. Hmm. <laughs> that was a good one. <clears throat> You're listening to Six Music. Yes, you. Just you. <laughs> Welcome to Travel Report. We've got a text here from Dave on the M5 who says, Ha ha ha, every morning you leave for work, I pop round and shag your wife. <laughs> So, uh, so if you're trying to get in via Junction 2, stop it. It's against nature, and the Bible says no. Next, we speak to Fern Breton about having her stomach stapled, this time to an enormous chocolate cake. Uh, in other traffic news, if you're on the M11 headed towards Middlesbrough, I would turn around because it's a shithole. <laughs> into the effect of replacing milk on your Weetabix with Red Bull! <laughs> and we can see there's been an accident northbound on the M1 and it is a beauty! <laughs> Welcome to Radio Tourette's, you shit monkeys! <laughs> you may think of it as a breakfast show, I had mine at 4 bloody 30! <laughs> Later, Vanessa Feltz will be joining me on the city, and I'll be bouncing through the fucking ceiling. Lines you wouldn't hear in a horror movie. Get out of the water, quick! Is it a shark? It's Barrymore! <laughs> I am Lucifer, Lord of the Night! And tonight, I'll be singing Complicated by Avril Lavigne. <laughs> Wake up. I think I can hear a noise downstairs. Wake up, wake up. Oh, hold on. No, it's just the washing machine. I put it on earlier on. <laughs> He's making a suit out of women's skin. Gok Wan has gone too far this time. <laughs> I am from Transylvania and I will suck you dry. Oh, yes? And what about your cheeky sister? <laughs> No, I'm sorry, Freddie. I think your set nav's on the blink. This is Elm Crescent. <laughs> the child is vomiting, its head is rotating, and it seems to be possessed by the devil. However, Britain's social services have visited 20 times, and they think everything's OK. Here to fix the hinges. <laughs> As a vampire, I cannot bear direct sunlight, which is why I moved to Scotland. But now I can't find any virgins. <laughs> Red rum. Red rum. Is over the last and wins the national. <laughs> From the makers of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre comes the Swindon Lawnmower Kerfuffle. This potion that turns you from Dr. Jekyll into Mr. Hyde, it looks a lot like six cans of Stella. <laughs> Stay away! Stay away from the castle! The cafe's overpriced and the gift shop shit! <laughs> The next topic is... Unlikely things to hear on a children's TV programme. We have John Craven. If you want to see him again, press the red button. 
This drawing has been sent in by Robert, age nine. That's a shit drawing, Robert. <laughs> children your age in China who can make shoes. This week's episode of Thomas the Tank Engine has been cancelled and replaced by Ronald, the replacement bus service. No, no. No, it's not bag puss, but it is a dead cat I've turned into a bag. <laughs> <laughs> There's a rumour that the Teletubbies have been infiltrated by Al-Qaeda. Have you, Tinky Winky? Lululululu. Have you, Dipsy? Lululululu. Rashid? And remember, while crystal meth is a lovely treat, it is very bad for your teeth. <laughs> Flobber dobber dob, said Bill. <laughs> Bloody foreigners, said Ben. <laughs> Flobber dobber dobber dob, said Ben, because he'd had a stroke. <laughs> Today, children, we're going to be learning where babies come from. Part one, foreplay. <laughs> this year, we're sending condoms to Africa. So just ask your mum and dad to wash a couple out and send them in. Are your mummy and daddy out of the room? Good. Listen, you're adopted. Next up, Sharpie and Ryan take their audition failure very badly in Columbine High School Musical. <laughs> Things you wouldn't hear at a party conference. Blackpool's nice, isn't it? <laughs> Unlike other party leaders I could mention, I am not a slave to the auto cue. Smile, pause, applause. <laughs> Would you please welcome the man who's made the Conservatives an electable force again? Gordon Brown! <laughs> I'm going to turn my back for one minute and I want whoever stole David Blunkett's dog to put it back. <laughs> the delegates were so impressed by Ming Campbell's speech that they gave him a ten-minute standing cremation. <laughs> Uh, kiss the baby. No, I'd better not. It might set my tag off. <laughs> well, I must say, on this issue, I'm with Al-Qaeda. <laughs> so, for Scottish independence and cheaper parking, vote SNCP. <laughs> In an attempt to be more like Barack Obama, Gordon Brown has sensationally blacked up. And I do believe we are the only party who are going to do anything about the amount of unemployed dwarves in this country. In fact, I saw one just outside holding a sign that said, no job, too small. We're going to open this BNP conference with a prayer, so if you'd all like to turn towards Mecca. <laughs> okay. The next topic is unlikely things to hear on a history documentary. Now follows a documentary about the Queen Mother, which contains nudity and strong language from the start. <laughs> and it was here of this exact spot that faced with 30,000 baying Frenchmen that Henry V shat himself. <laughs> <clears throat> On the first day of the Battle of the Somme, over 60,000 documentaries were commissioned. <laughs> I was in the parachute regiment. I was dropped over occupied territory. <laughs> 4,000 feet, 3,000, 2,000. I pulled the cord, mm, like a gold titan. <laughs> Two world wars 
and one World Cup. <laughs> Doodah. <laughs> and it was actually here in this very tower that the princes were slaughtered. Uh, William on Red Bull and vodka and... <laughs> Fifteen forty seven. Nostradamus predicts the rock group the Kaiser Chiefs. <laughs> he also predicts a riot. <laughs> <laughs> On one side of battle stood William of Orange. On the other side, Charles of O2 and Richard of Vodafone. <laughs> the final outcome of the Second World War has changed the world forever. So, if you don't want to know the result, <laughs> walk away now. Next, Eva Braun, the inventor of the lady shave. <laughs> so it was my job to assassinate Himmler. So I stood behind the tree and waited for his car to come round the corner. And then I leapt out and I said, Boo! <laughs> Sometimes all we had was the element of surprise. <laughs> <laughs> Napoleon was imprisoned in St. Helena, which was extremely uncomfortable for her. Her head was pointy, and he never took his boots off. <laughs> the Loch Ness Monster. Fact or fiction? Fiction. Good night. <laughs> of course, during the war, I was brought up in Dorset. None of us expected the surprise Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor. <laughs> <laughs> Unlikely things to hear on Crime Watch. But before we see tonight's crime, <laughs> let's meet the judges. <clears throat> Police say they are looking for a black man in his 20s and that they always will be. Do you recognise this man? Thought not. It's Nick Clegg. <laughs> they say criminals always return to the scene of a crime, which is why we've probably got so many Australians over here. <laughs> Next week, we'll be trying to solve the murders of the people who phoned up giving information on criminals this week. <laughs> Today, we're looking at identity theft. I'm... <laughs> All the victims are deaf, dumb or blind. These are senseless killings. <laughs> Baffled police are appealing for help. Do you know where Wally is? <laughs> so, uh, if you're being interrogated by the police and they're recording the interview, just make sure that every so often you go, Ow! <laughs> Tonight, the great train robbery. London to Glasgow, £235 return. <laughs> Tonight, we're looking for the man who keeps on burgling my home every time I present this program. <laughs> Hello, welcome to Crime Watch. I'm your host, Ray Winson. Leave it, you slag! <laughs> Don't go camping in the countryside. We noticed that whenever the police find a body, it's always in a tent. <laughs> Hello, I'm Nick Ross, and tonight I'm asking, who stole my fucking job? <laughs> OK, the next topic is... Unlikely things to hear in a TV election debate. The truth. <laughs> <laughs> Labour, ready! Tories, ready! <laughs> Bring on the wall! <laughs> I think of this studio as a second home, which is why I'm claiming expenses for it. 
and the lines have closed. Gordon, it could be you. David, it could be you. Nick, it's not going to be you. We in the Tory party are going to give the north of England a huge boost, and then all the people can come out and lick the chocolate off it. <laughs> If you're elected, you'll raise taxes. If your mum's elected, she will. <laughs> it's me who got you into this mess, and it's him that will get you out of it. <laughs> and at the end of that round, Gordon, you've scored no points. <laughs> I'm really very, very proud of my working class roots. Uh, when I was growing up, we only had an outside toilet. Eventually, we got enough money to buy a house. <laughs> Cheryl, tonight you're going to be mentoring the Lib Dems. <laughs> Let me know, Pick. What's your real name? <laughs> How will we shorten waiting lists? Simple. By letting the weak die. <laughs> <laughs> I am almost certain that was a floating voter. <laughs> Unlikely things to hear at an award ceremony. Our next award is for most inaccurate weather forecast of the year. Let's look at the 9,000 nominees. <laughs> Welcome to the Islamic Awards for Acting, or as we call them, the Moscas. <laughs> oh, well, gosh, so many people to thank. Um, where to begin? Uh, obvious one, I suppose, Hitler. Uh, what, 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 what? <laughs> and the award for best envelope glue goes to... <laughs> 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 now, Teacher of the Year. Quieten down. It's your own time you're wasting. <laughs> time now for us to celebrate some of the stars of show business who sadly are still with us. <laughs> now, just open the envelope. Uh, oh, it's full of gold. The award for special effects goes to the team behind Gordon Brown's smile. <laughs> and now we're going to watch a film showing some of the people that we've lost this year, including two you didn't even know were dead. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I'd bang that, I'd bang that, wouldn't bang that, I'd bang that. <laughs> anyway, the award for best actress goes to. <laughs> oh. Welcome to the Accident at Work Awards. <laughs> and winner of the Suicide Bomber of the Year. I'm afraid they couldn't be with us tonight. <laughs> and the winner of the best scientist in physics is... There's no ramp, Stephen Hawkins, it's not you. <laughs> The next category is things you wouldn't want to hear on a cruise. This is your captain speaking. Welcome to Somali cruising. <laughs> We've heard reports of an iceberg, but don't worry, no ship has ever been sunk by a lettuce. Welcome to Ryanair Cruises. The following safety announcement is incredibly vital if you want to stay alive. And if you'd like to hear that, that'll be an extra five pounds. <laughs> no, no, we very rarely get any injuries from people playing quoits. You were just unlucky to be sunbathing naked with an erection. <laughs> oh, yeah, we were on this last year when it sunk. 
<laughs> if you look to your left, there's a man eating squid. After that, he's having chips. <laughs> I would like to apologise for the rocking of this boat, but we are currently being humped by a whale. <laughs> hey, thanks for coming to the show. I've got to be honest, it's been a while since I've sung this one. Do you want to be in my gang, my gang? <laughs> Welcome to Rita's Erotic Ping Pong Bingo. <laughs> Two fat ladies, eh? Thirty-three. Oh, some hobnobs. For those of you gathering on the car deck, I said we would soon be docking, not dogging. I'm looking for a really old husband with money. How's your heart? No, I'm, uh, I'm in the cabin next to you. Could you be a bit noisy when you're having sex? <laughs> there appears to have been an incident in the swimming pool. If a Mr. Barrymore could contact the captain. <laughs> That's the end of the show. This week's winners are Andy Parsons, John Bishop and Russell Howard. Yeah. Commiserations to Chris Addison, Hugh Dennis and Sarah Milliken. Yeah. Thank you for watching. I'm Darvine. Good night. Still an hour of comedy to entertain you here on BBC Two tonight. Rab sees the voice of the people next. Then Paul Whitehouse and Charlie Hickson take on a string of new personas. Bellamy's people at ten. Unlikely things to hear in a fitness video. <laughs> Oi, we're going to Ross Kemp on leotards. <laughs> Now I'd like all you ladies to turn around, face away from me, bend over and touch your toes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm Madonna. I'm a 50-year-old woman with the body of a 40-year-old man. <laughs> Hi, I'm Michael Owen. Welcome to my fit... Oh, no, it's gone again. <laughs> Welcome to masturbate yourself thin. Remember, swap arms or you'll end up looking like a wonky Popeye. Want to have the type of body to drive your friends' wives crazy? Hi, I'm John Terry. <laughs> Hi, today I'm on a Swiss ball. Uncomfortable, particularly for the Swiss man it belongs to. Hey, want to lose weight and gain a friend? Why not insert a tapeworm? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'm the living proof that you can exercise yourself straight. <laughs> Everybody wants a six-pack. I do, and I've already had five of them. <laughs> Hi, I'm Cheryl Cole. Welcome to my boxer size video. Now, for this first workout, you're going to need a Nigerian toilet attendant and a really good lawyer. <laughs> OK, go on. See if you can raise your leg as high as I can. I bet you can't, because I'm Heather Mills. <laughs> OK, the next topic is... Unlikely lines to hear in a Hollywood blockbuster. Nemo, where the fuck have you been? <laughs> Look, Mr. Bond, do you want to hire the Ford Focus or not? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Vader, we are the child support agency. <laughs> The truth! You can't handle the truth! Welcome to the Fox News Channel. <laughs> Warning, this film contains Jennifer Aniston. <laughs> Spider-Man! 
man, look out, it's rolled up newspaper man. <laughs> <coughs> oh, excuse me. Sorry, where do you want to go, Hans? <laughs> it he got bone. <laughs> M, I've worked out what to do with Goldfinger. What we do is we put him in a big envelope, mark cash my gold. <laughs> What do you think of my father's for justice costume, Robin? Mmm, <laughs> cracking heroin grommet. <laughs> Look, I, I'm just an ex prime minister standing before an Iraq inquiry asking them to love him. <laughs> Cocos in Gorgio! So this mission is impossible. <laughs> Let's not bother. Andy Dufresne. When he walked into Shawshank, I knew he was fucked. <laughs> Revenge will be mine, Mr. Bond, when we meet in small claims court. Use the force, Luke! And if that doesn't work, turn it off and turn it back on again. Unlikely things to read in a Valentine's Day card. I may be dyslexic, but that doesn't mean I don't vol you. <laughs> Roses are red, violets are blue. I've got something nasty, and now so do you. You make me so hot, I can't stop thinking about you. Lots of love, Mum. <laughs> Happy Valentine's Day on this 24th of February. Love, Royal Mail. <laughs> You're the perfect person for me. Pissed and gagging for it. Be my valentine, or die in a well. <laughs> I love your eyes, I love your nose, I love your smell. Why must you be a Labrador? <laughs> Do we have to go through this shit every year? <laughs> you make my pants hot. Yours. Omar Farouk Abdul Mutalam. <laughs> to my darling wife, roses are red, violets are blue. Valentine's Day is consumerist bullshit. Now, haven't you got some ironing to do? <laughs> roses are red, poppies are red, the grass is all red. Shit, the garden's on fire! <laughs> I'm a bit of a man for the ladies. Doesn't matter how clearly the gents are signposted. <laughs> I love you so much. I love you like no other. But never again les up with my mother. <laughs> Life with me, baby, is like a roller coaster. It's got a weight restriction. <laughs> There are just three words I want to say. Dream on, bitch. <laughs> okay, next topic is on life as here in a science program. 1643. The cold air balloon is invented. <laughs> but it doesn't really take off. <laughs> For Einstein, it was easy to choose a DJ name. He would be MC Squared. <laughs> I'm Dr. Gillian McKeith, and today I'll be sifting through your poop. Why? Because I was never hugged as a child. <laughs> now on five, crop circles, myth or bollocks? <laughs> Next, to demonstrate chaos theory, we've locked Boris Johnson in a room with an aardvark and some magic mushrooms. <laughs> 
I was the man who discovered DNA. I wasn't going to call it that, but I was giving a lecture to the Royal Society, and I said, gentlemen, I believe I've discovered the genetic fingerprint of all human life. Ta-da! <laughs> I've been Richard Dawkins. Good night and God bless. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Thanks to carbon dating, this skeleton is now going out with a short-sighted geology student who likes thin people that don't talk much. <laughs> 1891. Sir Alexander Graham Benn receives the first wrong number telephone call. <laughs> that this equation was going to take him absolutely years. So he switched to a media studies course, which was a piece of piss. I did have here a pie chart to demonstrate obesity. Right. Apart from the human, the only animal to enjoy having sex is a dolphin. I had to shag a lot of animals to find that out. I'm a meerkat, she's not lying. Tonight we'll be discussing molecular science. Our guests are Sir Patrick Moore, Robert Winston and Dappy off of N-dubs. <laughs> With their tiny arms, could the T-Rex self-pleasure? Let's find out in another edition of Wanking with Dinosaurs. <laughs> unlikely things to get through your letterbox. Royal Mail parcel delivery. We called, you were in, so we ran away before you could answer. <laughs> Just three pounds a month will save last year's X Factor winner from starving. <laughs> Do you know what's in your attic? It's me, I've been there since Christmas. <laughs> Have you seen this dog? No. Maybe your windows are too dirty. Oh, heaven, the window cleaner. <laughs> are you looking for a dog walking service? Then call Ace Kebabs on 318 318. Computer problems? Let me come round and swear at it. Has your girlfriend stop changing near the window? Love Dad. Pizza, buy one, pay full price. <laughs> How's my driving? Call 0800 crashed into your house. <laughs> uh, dear Miss Winehouse, congratulations on turning 100. Best wishes, the Queen. Need a room clearing? Call me. I'll come round and fart in it. <laughs> Looking for an undertaker? Why not call Ace Kebabs <laughs> on 318 Gardening service. Middle of the night a speciality. Call Rose West on Broadmoor. <laughs> too, too soon, too soon. Hello, my name's Ashley Cole. Here's a picture of me naked. <laughs> Would you recognise a fake ID? No? Great, I'll be back in ten minutes. <laughs> the Taj Mahal Indian Restaurant. Formerly Ace Kebabs. <laughs> Open your letterbox. It's me! <laughs> Get through one day. <laughs> okay, the next topic is things you wouldn't hear at the Winter Olympics. And here are the British ice dance pair, Heather Mills and John Sargent. <laughs> and now over to Bob Sled. Bob, how's the curling? <laughs> <laughs> and while we wait for them to get set up there, we'll just pan the camera around. There's just a beautiful scenery. Oh, look, there's a herd of moose. Oh, no, that's the uh, Romanian women's ice hockey team. 
This is the big hill. Oh, that's long. That's very long. He's going to wish he'd done his flies up. <laughs> it's 1 a.m. in the UK. You're watching the women's figure skating. Why not just bite the bullet and turn to Television X for the 10 minute preview? <laughs> <laughs> mm. And Britain comes away with two gold, two silver, and a bronze. Well, that'll teach the Austrians a lesson for leaving their locker open. <laughs> conditions here reaching a bitter minus 20 degrees centigrade the British hopeful from Newcastle has put on a second string vest <laughs> you're watching the women's curling men's curling women's you're watching the curling <laughs> No one has more experience on the ice than him. What a wonderful games it's been so far for Pingu. <laughs> and the conditions are perfect here, aren't they, John? Yes, they are, Bob. I haven't seen this much white powder since that stag weekend at a hotel in Bangkok. That's what ice hockey is all about. A man having his head repeatedly smashed into a glass wall. <laughs> the ski jump will start as soon as the British skier takes his hand off the side and stops crying. <laughs> and there, the skier has surprisingly stopped off halfway down for a mulled wine and a shit. <laughs> Unlikely things to hear on a TV charity show. Okay, away we go. I'm Terry Wogan, and if you don't donate to children in need, I'll take Pudsey's other eye. <laughs> and John Terry's agreed to do a lot for charity, and her sister Verity, and her sister. <laughs> and remember, every pound you give leaves you a pound poorer. <laughs> All right, look, let's cut the bottom line. You all send us a five and we'll put the proper telly back on. <laughs> we desperately need your money. We're Portsmouth Football Club. <laughs> well, that was some shocking footage there. I don't think anyone could fail but be moved and harrowed by that horrible uh, piece of film there. But by the single anyway, it is for a good cause. <laughs> Next on ADHD Relief, oh, a penguin. <laughs> For just £35 a month, you can provide a child with unlimited text messages and 500 minutes. <laughs> Every Premiership footballer has pledged a week's wages, so with that, we have bought Africa. <laughs> Coming up later, we'll be poking Pudgy the Bear with sticks and making him dance. And if we reach the target of three million pounds, I will shave my balls. <laughs> and if we don't, I will still shave my balls. I just like doing it. So why not run the Sport Relief Mile? I'm going to. <coughs> Piers Morgan's coming. <laughs> Celebrities have been doing their bit with they've been uh, texting in all night. We've got one from Vernon K. Oh my god. <laughs> Every time I click my fingers, my PA brings me a cappuccino. We have sent Nick Knowles to a poverty stricken village in Africa. My God, haven't those people suffered enough? Chris Evans has spent the night in a bath full of baked beans, and when he's sobered up, he's going to come in and do something for comic relief. <laughs> and now the cast of a West End show, desperately plugging their dying musicals. 
This telethon raises money to get the homeless people of Britain gloves. That's right, it's time for hand relief. <laughs> Just eight pounds a month can help these African children build a well to hide from Madonna. <laughs> Commercials that never aired. <laughs> Our website shows the complete range of pubic wigs. Compare the Merkin.com. <laughs> Want to dress like you've got no GCSEs? Come on down to JJB! <laughs> This ad may be thoroughly misleading. The product may not work and it may burn your face off. Carlsberg. <laughs> Don't do liver transplants. <laughs> but if they did... <laughs> Fed up with your dull grey hair? Get used to it. You're a squirrel. <laughs> star because it's cheaper than toilet paper have you been injured in a trip or fall would you like to be injured in a trip or fall <laughs> oh Barry <laughs> incest just do it <laughs> Marmite you either love it or you hate it or you think it's okay but you'd rather have marmalade. I'm a rabbit, and they test makeup on me. But I don't mind, because I'm a bit of a slag. Burger King. Because you can't taste anything when you're pissed. <laughs> have you got long, dry hair? Could we stuff it down an oil well? Churchill, have you been rubbing your ass on the carpet again? <laughs> Hello, I'm Carol Vorderman, and this is my grandmother. Yes, I will literally sell anything. <laughs> I used to drink Strongbow Cider with my mate Dave, but he was killed by an arrow. <laughs> Christmas every day with new Brussels sprout flavoured condoms. Mmm, <laughs> tastes like grandma's ankles. Do you want your erectile dysfunction dealt with confidentially and sympathetically? Call floppywilly.com. <laughs> okay, the next topic is things you don't want to hear in hospital. I'm afraid it's the big C. It fell off the sign at Curry's and hit your wife on the head. Um, whose penis is this? <laughs> Come on, push! Push! We've got no staff and the bed needs moving! <laughs> so, just checking your notes here, uh, your Mrs A. Oh, I'm sorry. You've got MRSA. <laughs> you have a cute angina, and your tits aren't bad either. And if you don't want to know the results of your tests, look away now. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll tell you something funny about Dr. Thomas. In his handwriting, the words tonsils and genitals <laughs> look exactly the same. We're going to put you to sleep now because you're old and it's the kindest thing to do. <laughs> so uh, talk me through it again, Mrs Hopkins. You were having Sunday dinner. You said to your husband, will you carve? And he just lay down on the floor and gave birth to a baby cow. <laughs> Of course it's upsetting, but you know, Hitler only had one ball and look how well he did. 
This is Hospital Radio. I'm Chris Moyles, and I'll be with you for the next 14 hours. <laughs> Accept this sacrifice, almighty Satan! I don't like the look of the charts, Mr. Wilkins. Dizzy rascal at number one. How many fingers? That's right, two. Fuck off. <laughs> Unlikely lines to read in the Bible. The characters in this book are entirely fictitious. And Samson said, Lord, why have you given me all my strength in my hair? And the Lord replied, because you're worth it. <laughs> Noah noticed that the ark was sinking. He hated woodpeckers. <laughs> and Mary and Joseph were turned away from the inn, for there was no room. But then a wise man came along, whose name was Lenny of Henry. <laughs> His in, for it was a premier in. <laughs> Jesus was born in a stable, so in many years later, when he left the door open and people said, Were you born in a barn? he could say, Yes, I was actually. <laughs> and then a trumpet brought down the walls of Jericho. <laughs> it was Joshua with this bloody Fufuzela! <laughs> Moses arrived with the commandments. Oh, got some bad news for Dave the ox lover. <laughs> the Last Supper was a disaster. We're never going to Nando's again, lads. In the courtyard, Jesus came across a man who couldn't walk. Brother, he said, have you been involved in an accident? <laughs> And it rained for 40 days and 40 nights, which was a surprise because the Met Office had predicted a barbecue summer. <laughs> Adam and Eve had two sons who could not work together. Their names were Lampard and Gerard. <laughs> about the author, this is God's first book. <laughs> he has one son and he's a little bit touchy about gays. <laughs> Okay, the next topic is... Things you won't hear your sat-nav say. Don't be angry, but while you were getting petrol, I shagged your iPod. In 300 miles, you will realize this gimmicky voice was a <laughs> terrible mistake. At the next set of traffic lights, a cyclist is going to pull up next to you and give you a really dirty look like he's better than you. When the light turns green, let's see how good his balance is. <laughs> Turn right at the next junction for a bloody good dogging sight. <laughs> I'll tell you what, darling, how about you get out of the car and let your husband park? <laughs> Turn right. Wrong. I didn't say Satnav says. <laughs> Welcome to Joburg. Lock the doors, put on your bulletproof vest. And don't leave me here. If you go away and leave me here, I won't be here when you come back. <laughs> Bear left and over to the right. Squirrel! <laughs> oh, you just turned me on. <laughs> Hold on, I've got the map upside down. Left, left, your girlfriend's left. <laughs> Next in a party, you drink and I'll drive. 
Did you turn the gas off? Did you lock the door? Did you? Did you? I reckon we should go back. I reckon we should go back. <laughs> Where the fuck are we? <laughs> Unlikely things to hear at the World Cup. I'll tell you what, that Nelson Mandela's a bit of a dick. <laughs> <laughs> and on comes the sub for North Korea, and it's torpedoed the opposition. <laughs> Pesky scores! <laughs> And there they are, Scotland through to the final 16. <laughs> and we're a bit pushed for time this week, so uh, the both sides have been told to just play the highlights. <laughs> the last time I saw African kids this excited, Madonna was at their school with a net. <laughs> It's very hard to tell with his legs at that angle, but no, that is definitely a Brazilian. <laughs> yes, on the one hand, uh, we lose uh, the tournament, uh, but uh, on the plus side, it's told me tonight. <laughs> That's right, Emmanuel Adeboyo. I understand exactly what you just said. <laughs> fans are taunting the American fans by holding up an oil-covered pelican. <laughs> Ooh, goody, James Corden's show's on next. <laughs> England, of course, are being sponsored by Tesco Online, which is why John Terry has just been substituted by three ripe avocados. <laughs> And here we are on safari. There is a giraffe and an ostrich. I'm terribly sorry, it's Peter Crouch's parents. England are playing fantastically. This is a splendid DVD of 1966. <laughs> <laughs> what a shame Ireland couldn't be here, but then Thierry Henry is a filthy, cheating, lying bitch. <laughs> You want carpets? Can I eat the egg on your carpet? <laughs> okay, the next topic is... Unlikely letters to television channels. Dear Channel 5, your recent documentary on dyslexia was insightful and sensitive. Please show the boy was shit for brains again. <laughs> As a terrorist, I've been watching <laughs> Countdown with interest. <laughs> It is rubbish, nothing happens. <laughs> Dear News 24, go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> Dear Babe Station, have you actually read the trade's description of that? <laughs> Dear Bravo, I don't quite know how to put this, but uh, well done. <laughs> Dear Channel 5, isn't it time you just called it a day? <laughs> no one will mourn. <laughs> I'm writing to thank you. On Sunday afternoon, while I was watching television with my wife, I was urged to press the red button. I did, and my wife had her first orgasm in 40 years. <laughs> Dear Al Jazeera, please bring back your hit sitcom, Men Behaving Bad Badly. <laughs> History Channel. The Nazis were bad. We get it. <laughs> Dear Hallmark, roses are red, violets are blue, your cards are shit and your channel is too. <laughs> Dear Channel 4, why don't you pricks book me for any of your shows? <laughs> Sky Sports minus one. Thank you for showing the Grand National. I won £100,000. Dear Point of View, who should I complain to if I think Point of View is shit? Dear Fiverr, if I give you a tenner, will you please stop broadcasting? 
Dear Channel 4, why not liven up Deal or No Deal by putting a nail bomb in one of the boxes? <laughs> Bad things to say on a first date. The last time I was in this nightclub, I was still a man. <laughs> I've bought some condoms, and in preparation, I've got one on already. Yes, I know it's only dinner, but unless you sign this prenup, you're not getting any. <laughs> My last girlfriend asked if I could play smoke on the water, so I threw a toaster in her bath. <laughs> oh, I see. So when you put bubbly on the advert, you meant fat. <laughs> You've got good hips. Let me see your teeth. We'll take her. <laughs> Actually, during the day, I'm something really high up in the city. <laughs> well, so anyway, so listen, that's enough about me. Tell me about your sister. <laughs> Okay, I did crop my Facebook photo so as you couldn't see my conjoined twin. <laughs> Whoa! How pissed was I when I asked you out? <laughs> Not as pissed as I was when I said yes! <laughs> There's nothing you can do about it. I know I'm gonna shag you. Uh, my dating history, yeah. Um, divorce, beheaded, died. <laughs> divorce, beheaded, survived. Very good. Okay. The next topic is unlikely lines to hear in a disaster movie. From the makers of Snakes on a Plane come Snails in a Caravan. I want you to upload the schematic to my PDA. I, I, I need you to send the, the picture to my mobile. <laughs> Ambassador Throw, are you telling me that intergalactic war occurred? Because one of your people said, I'm going to the shops, do you want something? And another one replied, yes, get me a galaxy. Men, we are heavily surrounded, but don't worry. Gaza has arrived with some chicken and a fishing rod. It's one story of terror. It's bungalow inferno. <laughs> Listen to me. I want you to take the kids. I want you to go to your mother's. You'll be safe there. I'm going to stay here and shag the nanny. <laughs> the boat is sinking. There's not enough lifeboats. And the worst thing of all, Celine Dion is singing the theme tune. <laughs> there is a house. In New Orleans. <laughs> the Martians landed at around 4 a.m. in Bracknell, went to Ur, and left again. <laughs> the ship is sinking. I don't care. I'm a duck. <laughs> Yeah, if you just press that, it'd be all right. <laughs> this is a virus like we have never encountered. 50% of the population will be debilitated completely. The other half will be able to carry on as normal. Gentlemen, this is man flu. <laughs> Do you not realize if this contagion spreads, the entire X Factor judging panel could be wiped out. Rejected questions from this year's exams. 
To keep them cool, the testes of the male Homo sapiens are on the outside. Should he put them back in his trousers? <laughs> Wayne lives three miles away from Kaylee, and Martin lives six miles away from Wayne. Who got her pregnant? <laughs> oil well is spilling out oil at 50,000 barrels a day, how do you stop it? Uh, really? How do you stop it? If you mix blue and yellow, how crap is your government? If Mary has one apple, Thomas has an apple and an orange, and Tarquin has two apples, an orange, an ugly fruit, and two kumquats... Parents read The Guardian. Which is faster, a cheetah or Mel Gibson leaving the mobos? If you removed a man's lower intestine and stretched it as far as it could go, how angry would he be? <laughs> Calculate the circumference of Eamon Holmes using pi. Travelling at a constant speed of 70 miles an hour round the M25. In what imaginary universe? <laughs> Henry VIII loved the bitches. Discuss. <laughs> Chemistry. What's that smell? Nelson lost an arm and an eye. Why didn't he call Claims Direct? <laughs> Your mum's a slag. <laughs> Discuss. The next topic is things you won't hear in a gardening programme. If you're into naked gardening, here's a tip. Be careful what you do with the shears. And that, folks, is how you get rid of a body. <laughs> Not only that, but somebody has been sneaking into the allotment and putting topsoil on the ground. The plot thickens. <laughs> Last year, I couldn't be bothered to dig up my garden, so I phoned up Time Team and told them I'd just found a Roman coin. <laughs> And now, over to our lawnmower expert, Stumpy Jeff. Hi, guys! <laughs> so you see, David here has got some nice buddleia, and Jemima there, she's got some nice hydrangea, and I've got chlamydia. <laughs> well, that's it for this week. I'm off home to plant my seeds. My wife's ovulating, and I don't want to miss my slot. <laughs> flowers like this when you can steal them from a traffic black spot. <laughs> Last week you were complaining about rabbits being rampant in your garden and being a pest. But let me tell you, I've got a rampant rabbit and when it's in my garden it causes nothing but joy. <laughs> having terrible trouble with a mole. He keeps on passing confidential information to other gardeners. <laughs> see, here we see, we've got a nice uh, rockery over there, and there's a, there's a lovely fountain we put in, and next to that is the tree of knowledge. You will not eat from the tree of knowledge! <laughs> if your lawn suffers from patchy grass, just grow it along one side and comb it over. <laughs> And if you leave it for about four or five years, it should be just the right height to piss behind. In a garden, it's... Who's blocking my light? Dara, could you just... Could you just... <laughs> and over here is a wonderful water feature, like in Brussels, of a small boy pissing. <laughs> this one's from Thailand, and I pay him 20 pence a week. It's good money. <laughs> so that's Mark 
the week at 10 p.m. BBC Two. Unlikely things to read in a political memoir. <laughs> so we were playing truth or dare, and I didn't want to tell the truth, so I shagged Edwina Curry. <laughs> Big Ben struck 12 and stopped. Thank God, my buttocks were on fire. <laughs> I thought I'd press the button that summoned the tea lady. Imagine my surprise when it turned out I bombed Russia. I think, I think the greatest thing about m meeting the Queen was listening to him singing Candle in the Wind. Yeah. <laughs> Say what you like about Robert Mugabe, but that moustache makes all the difference to foreplay. <laughs> I suspected that John Prescott was having an affair when the four legs of his desk came through the ceiling above me. I was actually at college with Saddam Hussein. We were at Sussex together doing chemistry and combined inhumanities. <laughs> At the start, there were three women in the cabinet, five in the cellar and two under the patio. Deciding to go to war was one of the tensest games of eeny, meeny, miny, mo I have ever played. We'd sometimes break up boring cabinet meetings by convincing David Blunkett he was black. <laughs> Oh, when we got into Bosnia, the first thing we did was get the United Nations troops <laughs> setting up trestled tables with plates of cheese straws and sausage rolls. But it turns out we were supposed to provide a buffer, not a buffet. <laughs> John Prescott, an autobi... Uh, an autobi... a book by me. <laughs> Take that, you bastard, he said. No one fucks with Mahatma Gandhi. <laughs> the next topic is things you wouldn't hear in a medical documentary. I know you're a teenage mother, but nobody will patronise you here. Come through to the slag ward. <laughs> next, he was put in a cat scanner. Unfortunately, the cat was still in it. <laughs> And so Nick Griffin comes round after the face transplant, and that's not the colour he was expecting. <laughs> OK, now cough and cough again. OK, yeah, I've got the diagnosis. Got a cough. <laughs> Eventually, doctors had to break his leg in six places. It was the only way to stop him running round the ward, the little tosser. <laughs> 34% of people in this country have irritable bowel se Oh, sorry. <laughs> what this attractive patient doesn't realise is Dr. Singh was struck off years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Brian is 75 stone. He hasn't left the house for three years. What a fat bastard. <laughs> After months of tests, doctors finally discovered what had caused his blindness. He'd been masturbating too much. <laughs> Today we're attempting a slightly difficult operation. What we're hoping to do is remove the Adam's apple with a pair of tweezers without the patient's nose flashing red. <laughs> Tara removes her top to reveal a hideous skin infection. Look away now if you're eating Rice Krispies. <laughs> the Siamese twins were joined in the most embarrassing place imaginable and known by friends as the skipping rope. Unlikely lines to hear in a kid's film. Oi, Shrek! 
Have you been upsetting Colleen again by shagging those prostitutes? <laughs> Garfield, what are you doing in that bin? <laughs> E.T., I'm pregnant. <laughs> Where's Nemo? Look inside the batter. <laughs> I'm terribly sorry. I'll just put my clothes back on. I thought you said chitty chitty gangbang. <laughs> Mr. Von Trapp, I'm here from the council. We've had complaints about some terrible singing coming from your house. So, he asked all five of you if you would like to look round his chocolate factory, did he? <laughs> Mary Poppins, I arrest you on suspicion of supercalifragilistic sex trafficking. <laughs> King of the Swingers, nice to meet you. I'm King of the Doggers. <laughs> wow, Nanny McPhee, that was not the big bang I was expecting. <laughs> I am Bambi, son of a murdered mother, husband of an endangered doll. I will have my vengeance in this life. <laughs> Okay, the next topic is things you wouldn't hear in a cookery show. Mm. No, no, that's definitely a poodle. <laughs> <laughs> Today, I brought along chicken tonight, but I'm going to have it tomorrow. <laughs> Smash the system. <laughs> so, finally, just pour on the milk, and there you have it. Cereal. And remember, you must eat the brain to get their power. <laughs> a lot of people recommend washing your hands after handling raw meat, but it's just as easy to let a dog lick them or to wipe them <laughs> on a relative. <laughs> golden, Golden, relax. We're doing a bit of dinner, mate. <laughs> You're not sorting out in the Middle East, dear. <laughs> So just boil for 15 minutes, and if there's still life in her, she's a witch. <laughs> Welcome to It's Late, and there's not much left in the fridge. Today we're going to be making onion double cream banana pasta ketchup. <laughs> the, uh, the unique flavour of the sausages is from a recipe from my missing, my wife. So if you want to give your bar snacks that genuine pub feeling, why not sprinkle them with urine? <laughs> I'm Jamie Oliver, and in my new series, I'm going to be travelling the length and breadth of the UK in a VW camper. Welcome to Coco Van. <laughs> and believe me, these fried insect legs really are the bee's knees. <laughs> Today, I'm going to be making prune and sweet corn chickpea couscous, because I like to give my bowels a challenge. <laughs> Next, the ginger pudding. Anthony Worrell Thompson, what are you going to be cooking for us tonight? So, I've been beating away for half an hour, but I'm just lonely. Let's get on with the cooking. On lighter things to hear on a news programme. Behind me, a man lies dead. That's what happens if you pull faces in the background <laughs> when I'm doing a piece to camera. This is BBC Three's News in 15 Seconds. Floods, recession, Lib Dems, Wayne Rooney. <laughs> Medical news, Justin. Pioneering x-rays have proven that Nick Clegg has a spine. 
Our tape of Big Ben is broken. Bong. <laughs> this is Fox News. <laughs> Freed Lockerbie bomber Ado Bassa Al Magrahi has died. Are you there? No, there's no one there. Well, we hope to talk to Michael Jackson later. <laughs> later on, we'll be finding how the Queen arrived in Australia, but first. <laughs> Finally, economic news. We're fucked. Good night. <laughs> There is still an embargo on revealing the footballer at the centre of this sex case. This is Brian Henderson outside John Terry's house. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Protesters set fire to cars and blocked the carriageway for several hours in protest over something or other, bloody French. <laughs> City News now, London is dangerous, York is old, and Bristol is a bit weird. <laughs> the next topic, please. Unlikely things to hear on a train. Uh, this is the Virgin train service to Edinburgh. If you're not a virgin, would you please get off at Hemel Hempstead? <laughs> we would like to apologise for the bumpy ride as we entered the last station. This is due to some selfish bastard throwing himself under the train. We are now arriving in Sheffield. Could all passengers in first class please pull back your window blinds and take a look at the real world. Uh, we'd like to apologise for the toilet being out of order for the entire journey as Ricky Hatton is in it. <laughs> Uh, due to staff shortages, I am unable to finish this announce. <laughs> Hot food is now available because the buffet car is on fire. <clears throat> we have now arrived into Birmingham New Street. We are pleased to inform any passengers wishing to change for Wolverhampton that there's a JD Sports opposite the station. <laughs> Excuse me, do you have any more of those sandwiches? They're delicious. <laughs> hmm, I wonder whether I should take my personal belongings with me when I leave this train. <laughs> if only there was an announcement that could possibly help me. <laughs> uh, we apologise for the delays of this service. This was caused by points failure at Make Something Up. train speaking. I know we're running a bit late, but don't worry, I know a shortcut. Should the passenger causing a disturbance in the quiet coach please settle down and stop shouting about your heart medicine. Would the driver please contact the guard? <laughs> we have no idea where you are. <clears throat> this is the driver contacting the guard. Where am I? Unlikely things to hear in a quiz show. Well, welcome to Junior Mastermind, our annual competition to find the best nerdy specky nobby no mates in <laughs> 2010. <laughs> we asked 100 people, name something you eat with a spoon. And the top answer was, piss off, I'm busy. <laughs> so 
Now, Nick Griffin, you were the weakest link in that round and yet you chose to get rid of Rashid. Why? <laughs> and on tonight's Family Fortunes, we're joined by the Fritzels and the Wests. <laughs> So, Noel, your soul for a resurrected career. Deal or no deal? <laughs> Ooh, this one has really stumped Steve from the eggheads. The question was, what is it like to have sex with a woman? Welcome to Weakest Link Bankers Edition. You've banked nothing, scored nothing, and yet you still have a bonus. <laughs> you have one lifeline left. That's calling your country's government to see whether they will accept our demands. <laughs> We asked a hundred people, where is the G-spot? You've given us your answer. If it's up there, love, I'll give you the money myself. <laughs> so this question for 100 pounds. <laughs> what <laughs> is your pin number? <laughs> 60 quid for half a gram of Coke. Deal or no deal? <laughs> I'm Dale Winton, and you've got to be in it to win it. And by that, of course, I mean my bottom. <laughs> the next topic is lines you wouldn't hear in an action movie. Right, I know what you're thinking. Did he fire six shots or just five? <laughs> to be honest, in all the kerfuffle, I've kind of lost count myself. <laughs> Seeing as how this is a .44 Magnum, which is the most powerful shotgun in the world, could blow your head clean off, you've got to ask yourself, what am I like? <laughs> if I press this button, you will witness the worst thing you could possibly imagine. Channel 5. <laughs> I know you're mad, Max, but getting drunk and blaming everything on the Jews isn't going to help. First, Mr. Bond, I plan to aim the giant laser at the world, and then, oh, fuck, this can't shout me again. <laughs> okay, men, this is the plan. We tunnel under the wire. We make a dash for Blighty, and hopefully we'll never ever have to compete in the Commonwealth Games. I want your clothes, your boots, and your unicycle. There is a bomb on this bus, but we think we know who's got it. But if we get this wrong, we might look a bit racist. <laughs> Batman, it's Catwoman. She says she's been thrown in a wheelie bin. <laughs> they beat him, they kicked him, they shot him, they left him for dead. Now, he's dead. <laughs> now listen to me, Bourne. If you're not back in ten minutes, your dinner goes in the bin. And yes, that is an ultimatum. <laughs> Your father. Really? <laughs> You're black. <laughs> I'm Iron Man, doing what I do best ironing. <laughs> Which box do I put it in? Terminator 5, recycling day. <laughs> I am Maximus Decimus Meridius, commander of the legions of the north, father to a murdered son, 
husband to a murdered wife, and I will have my vengeance in this life or the next. Gladiator! Ready! Lines you wouldn't hear in a TV detective show. The suspect has got a gun, but it's okay. Gaz has arrived and he's brought chicken and a fishing rod. I'm not doing it. This is a midwinter murder. It's freezing. It's not in the contract. And as you can see from the samples we've taken that we've scraped from under her fingernails, she was manky. <laughs> he were a policeman that got hit by a car and thought that he'd woken up in 1970. It were wrong. It were present day. This is CSI Hull. <laughs> Sergeant, if you look closely, there are semen stains all over these bed sheets. Let's book into the Holiday Inn instead. <laughs> Poirot, you've done it again. You've bored me shitless for the last two hours. So that's it. At the end of a three-month investigation, that is it. Is Colonel Mustard in the living room with a lead pipe? <laughs> Inspector, has anyone ever said that you look an awful lot like David Jason from Only Fools and Horses? <laughs> yes, Miss Markle, we've had the lab results back, and it's very interesting. Actually, it's thrush. <laughs> he fits the profile. This is going to be a really boring episode of Hole in the Wall. <laughs> You're probably wondering why I've asked you all to gather here in the library. Sorry? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> wondering why I've asked you to gather in the library. Uh, <laughs> it's the TV presenter, Noel Edmonds. Have you any idea why he was killed? It's the TV presenter, Noel Edmonds. <laughs> Ken Stott is Detective Inspector David Sod in Sod's Law. Well, we know now who's responsible for the killing. It's society, yeah? Yeah, you want to think about that, hmm? The body is that of Eamon Holmes. We may need a little more chalk. Okay, the next topic is unlikely things to hear from a sports commentator. So just 80 meters to go and the building of this running track will be finished. <laughs> and Ricky Hatton there, bleeding heavily from the nose, this boy really knows how to party. <laughs> And we're just getting the news that Usain Bolt's uh, ankle isn't actually sprained, it's broken. So the only thing to do is to collect some of his sperm and then shoot him in the head. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Sky Sports, or if you're watching Sky Sports 3D... Hello and welcome! <laughs> ah, the smack of leather on Willow as Sue Barker walks into a tree. <laughs> The race hasn't started yet. I've just got a bit of a problem. <laughs> All of the drivers have their own little good luck rituals. This one's brought a tiny good luck troll. Oh no, that's Bernie Eccleston. <laughs> well, we'll have to see what the referee gets out. I don't think any of us were expecting that. Unfortunately, the Man United team have turned up with the wrong kit, so today they're going to have to play in their pants. <laughs> he's got his wood out and he's in a nasty bit of rough. He needs to get to the golf course as quickly as he can. <laughs> well, 
Well, I have to say, I do agree with the crowd. The referee is a wanker. <laughs> Welcome to Delhi for the shit pit. Sorry, the uh, <laughs> shot put. <laughs> no, no, I was right first time. <laughs> uh, you join me for the men's discus final. Women's? That's no woman. <laughs> and as the derby winner is led out by his jockey, the sexual tension is almost unbearable. <laughs> So with one over to go, this next delivery could change everything. And it has. It's a no ball. I've won £400,000. And I'm off to the airport. <laughs> oh, and that's a beautiful shot there on the black. I really should remember these boxers' names. <laughs> okay, give that round. Boys, show you. Hey!